You know, we won New Hampshire three times now, three. Uh, Tonight, an anticipated win in New Hampshire for former President Donald Trump, inching one step closer to the GOP nomination, beating Nikki Haley. She's doing uh, like a speech like she won. She didn't win, she lost. But in a race that came down to just two candidates, his opponent narrowing the gap with Trump, trailing by less than she did in Iowa. New Hampshire is first in the nation. It is not the last in the nation. This race is far from over. Historically, New Hampshire's first in the nation primary has been a game changer. Our electorate is very, very engaged. You know, Iowa picks corn, New Hampshire picks presidents. And here, it's a close contact sport. We do get to meet and see up close and personal all the candidates, but it also comes with responsibility. Responsibility that's born results. The last five winners of New Hampshire's Republican primary went on to become the party's nominee. The state has a unique electorate. The majority of voters are not affiliated with a party, meaning they can vote on the day of the primary for either party. With such an equally divided state, you really do need to appeal to people, not only in your base, but also in the center. And that's why we showed up at Marianne's Diner in Derry, New Hampshire, where folks of every political stripe show up here for breakfast. Yeah, I like Trump's policies, but him himself as a person, I'm not key on, you know, the way he talks about people, the way he, he acts to, towards people and stuff like that. Because I voted for him last time, so, you know. So why not this time? Just because of the craziness, I don't know. I just didn't like what happened at the end with the Capitol. It was a sad moment, I think, for our country. January 6th was also a line in the sand for Matthew Bartlett. Born and raised in New Hampshire, he was working in the U.S. State Department that day, appointed by Trump himself. I distinctly remember walking home and just seeing the Capitol, seeing the mayhem, and feeling such utter disgust, and made a very easy decision in my life, which was, dear Mr. Secretary, I hereby resign immediately. Candidly speaking, I think these were January 6th terrorists. This year, it's not clear what role January 6th will play at the ballot box, if any. Well, it could be an impact. But I think it'll be small. The bigger impact is the economy and the border. Those really, every day I hear those two issues over and over again. Bartlett is one of the 70% of Americans who think that things aren't going well in the nation. But more than anything, I worry about uh, the attitude of our party. I am much more interested in someone who is eager to lead America to better days than some of the revenge-style guttural politics. He says he hopes his former boss does not get the nomination. Is Donald Trump fit to serve as president of the United States again? Listen, in my opinion, no. I think we got plenty of better options out there. Whether I want to admit it or not, on January 6th when I walked in that building, I did become something else. What that is, I don't know. Jason Riddle was there on January 6th. The New Hampshire resident says he walked through an open door right into the Capitol, drank from an open bottle of wine, and stole a book from the Senate parliamentarian. He served 90 days in prison after pleading guilty to two misdemeanor charges, theft of government property, and illegally protesting inside the Capitol. He says he's still unpacking how it all happened. How does... A gay married man who voted for Obama become a Trump guy. Like everything else back then, in my mind, it was everyone else's fault. He'd taken an oath to defend America's democracy as an Army and Navy reservist, had once been a federal government employee working at the post office, and even served as a corrections officer. And you know, whenever things didn't work out, I would just move on to the next. I was ignoring a lot of problems the whole way. And, and probably just, oh, you mean what? Uh, I'm an alcoholic. Because you're an alcoholic. That's what alcoholics do. They drink. They drink and they obsess. I wasn't a Trump supporter. I was a Trump obsessor. Riddle says he was drawn to the negative attention that came from being a Trump supporter. He calls this shirt his trouble jersey. I put this what on. does that mean, trouble jersey? Because every time I put this on, someone would see it and get mad and they'd come over and I'd get a reaction and we'd blame them for judging me for what I'm wearing. He says he knew Biden beat Trump in the 2020 election. He just didn't care. So we walk towards the Capitol building, and that's when things started getting a little weird. What do you mean a little weird? Uh, with people with weapons. That that's became part of the routine with Trump rallies, too. You, you got a little, little used to violence before January 6th. Court documents citing government surveillance footage state 
Riddle was in the Capitol for 14 minutes. He says he left the Capitol grounds as soon as he heard a woman, Ashley Babbitt, had been shot and killed by Capitol Police. I looked up and I see all the cops and they're starting to work their way in. I remember thinking, they can start shooting us right now. They were perfectly within their rights to open fire. They very well, well uh, could have, should have, I don't know. Excuse me, I'm mean, a little stuttery. Yeah. The FBI found him in a matter of weeks. And when law enforcement later came to his home to arrest him, he turned to the bottle once again. My goal, because I hated myself, was I want to get everyone to hate me as much as I hate myself. He was sentenced on April 4th, 2022. Part of his probation included mandatory alcohol treatment. It wasn't a punishment. It was a rehabilitation. And anyone who, in their mind, thought it was a good idea to drive down to the Capitol building for something they knew was nonsense is in need of rehabilitation. That should include and not be limited you know, to the person who told us to go there in the first place. There are a number of good and decent people in our country who love and support Donald Trump. What do you say to them? And it's this false narrative that if you don't vote for this 80-year-old, you're going to get that 80-year-old. And I think that's wrong. I think that's a lie. So, how do you see yourself? See myself as a former insurrectionist. I took part in what Trump is trying to do in dismantling our, our civil union. And now, so everyone has a choice on what they can do. His choice this time around is to vote for Nikki Haley. I think you can use a lady's touch right now. We've been letting the guys run the show for a while. Let's see what a lady can do, you know? <laughs> <laughs> a hint of that sentiment in most places we went. She seems like the most common sense person. I was a uh, registered Democrat and I changed affiliation so I could vote in the uh, Republican primaries. Our goal is just to be strong. We wanted to be strong in Iowa. We felt good with that. We want to be stronger in New Hampshire. And then we want to be even stronger than that in South Carolina. We're in it for the long haul. We're going to get it done. We always wanted to have a strong second. That's the only expectation we ever laid out there. Haley's next stop, South Carolina, where she'll appeal to her home state voters in exactly one month. Hey, guys, good morning. Haley banking on support from independent voters like Michelle Wilson back at Mary Ann's Diner, who voted for Obama and Biden. You can't bring yourself to vote for Trump. You're not going to vote for Biden. Therefore, you're left with Nikki Haley. I don't so much say I'm left with Haley as much as I feel that she's going to be a better candidate to put my eggs in the basket. I gave Biden a shot. Trump had his shot. And neither one of them left me feeling in any way, shape, or form complete. 